Now you may not understand monster right now, but after this video you will. Who can fight a monster that corrupts everything it comes close to, no matter the age, gender or societal standing? It would take a man dedicating his life to a profession solely to help people, to undo the damages the monster has caused. A selfless man like Dr. Tenma. In the beginning, when the woman comes up to Tenma, who was given the orders to save a different person than her husband, the woman cries and begs for her husband to be brought back, but it's already too late. At the dining table with Ava Heinemann, his wife, he talks about how it wasn't his responsibility if the woman's husband died, because he wasn't in charge. And she agrees with this, but she has a different interpretation. Not all people's lives are equal. This same phrase is often used in the series, and the main part of Temma's character. We see this when she says this, and this shakes Temma to the core, to the point he chooses to save a little boy over saving the mayor. Johan is brought to the hospital. Because of these combined factors, Dr. Tenma saves a monster. By saving this monster, Dr. Tenma ends up losing his position in his own job, and even loses his wife. As a doctor, he is supposed to be empathetic, and only ever have the patient's health in mind, among many other reasons. This is why Tenma stands out from the rest. Most of the doctors are looking for a good promotion, and more money, while Tenma only ever wanted to help out of the goodness of his heart. He is exactly the right person to take down a monster. When I hear monster, I think of a big, vile creature with claws, fangs, and a stare terrifying enough to scare a grown man. Johan has beautiful hair, a soothing voice, and soft facial features, coupled with kind eyes and a welcoming smile. He's well-dressed and spoken. You would never expect this handsome man to harbor ill will towards anyone. Johan in the series of Monster is barely shown compared to other characters. He has a shadow, a ghost. People are trying to find a man with different identities different lives, and most importantly, someone with no real name. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and on its horns were ten diadems, and on its heads were blasphemous names, and the dragon gave it his power and his throne and great authority. They worshipped the dragon, for he had given authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? and who can fight against it. What can be seen as a meaningless quote is actually one that could describe monster. Johan in the series is a devil-like person. He uses the monster inside of people to make them commit terrible acts. The monster inside of people is their worst traits, or what you could call the evil inside of them. Throughout the show, Johan uses their worst traits in a way like when he tempted an alcoholic to give into his past sins to off himself. How use Edmund Farin's guilt of being a fake son of Shuvolt to push him to suicide. How Johan uses murderers to murder. Johan uses the worst in people like how the devil tempts people by using their dark qualities, which causes the fall of humanity. As humans, we are prone to temptation, as wants and needs are a core part. Monster really likes to delve into this concept through the monster that lurks within. This is shown further on when an angry Dr. Tenmuk is talking to Johan that is pretending to be sleeping, and he spouts his belief against the idea that all lives are not equal and forever explains his dislike towards the director, aka his boss, and also Ava's father. He yells that he'd be better off dead. Johan hears all this, and later will murder the director and the other corrupt doctors. This is shown as just an angry moment from Tenma. People will look over this, but it's not just that. We see Tenma fall into alcohol and spout the same beliefs. This is important because alcohol stifles reasoning skills and contemplating repercussions. As a result, people are more likely to tell the truth while intoxicated, offering up brutally honest, unfiltered opinions. And without the fear of consequences, alcohol can give people the courage to do or say things they ordinarily wouldn't entertain. In episodes 2-3, to three, Tema wishes for Dr. Heinemann to die. While this could be seen as a spur of the moment reaction for anger, he does truly want this. At the bottom of his heart, that's his bit of evil. When he's drunk, he keeps repeating the things he truly believes, like his belief that all human lives are equal, and how power doesn't matter. And in chapter 4, even when he's sleeping, this is once again important, as Tenma's subconscious even wants this. His inner monster was shown, and it led them to actually dying due to him coming to the devil, which he thought was just a boy. Another hint in monster using the Christian references as a main part of Johan is the way he murders. Johan is a man that can end anyone's life with just words. He can do this through manipulation. He does this using your inner monster along with isolating you. We saw this with a killer that Johan uses in chapter 17 where Tenma disagrees with the idea of erasing your past. The killer stops and wonders why he believed this. 
The reason this was added in this conversation was to show that Johan isolates people. After talking to Tenma, he still ends up ending his own life because of the sins gathering and his worth being gone. Same with Detective Richard and the famous drinking scene. Johan is once again isolating him up on the rooftop while putting the sins on his back to make him end his life. Throughout Monster, different motives change, but it isn't actually presented, like Johan's change after he read the nameless monster, and his action each time she gained her memories back, and even Tenma's actions when he is an accused murderer. This part of Monster was Tenma's character journey. He went to the if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you type of development. Who is like the beast? and who can fight against it. This particular text is meant to raise the question of how exactly do you deal with an evil man like Johan? Do you become just as evil to take him down? How are you supposed to defeat the evil with no sense of remorse? Wer mit Ungeheuern kämpft, mag zusehen, dass er nicht dabei zum Ungeheuer wird. Und wenn du lang in einen Abgrund blickst, blickt der Abgrund auch in dich hinein. To beat the monster, you have to be like the monster. When Tenma is accused of murdering the people, Johan has been murdering the director specifically. Tenma starts to go down the path of learning to take down the monster. He goes to many places to find out who is the monster. This leads him to many places throughout the series, including the taboo orphanage named 511 Kinderheim, the Free Frogs, the Red Rose Mansion, and many other things such as the book named The Nameless Monster. All this builds into making a monster. Much as his philosophy seems to run on nihilism. There's nothing special about being born. Not a thing. Most of the universe is just death, nothing more. In this universe of ours, the birth of a new life on some corner of our planet is nothing but a tiny, insignificant flash. Death is a normal thing, so why live? Johann's nihilism is just that, killing. And it comes even more with his nihilism, which is the picture book, The Monster by No Name. Which leads to the creator of that book, Franz Bonaparte or Klaus Pope. He mainly told children some terrifying and nihilistic stories, mainly to change their perspective of the world, to make them believe everyone and everything is evil and such. Not only this, but this helps as the ending of Monster we see the hallucination of Tenma and how Johan wonders about his mother's choice. So the mother's choice plus the nameless monster was enough to hit Johan with a different perspective on life. Now back to Bonaparte. It wasn't explained much in the main series of Monster, but many of his students ended up committing suicide, or they just had several issues with their families slash wives and children. Basically, he brainwashed them. Bonaparte is an extreme weirdo. His dad died just because they found the same woman attractive. Also, a main factor. Bonaparte is a true monster. Many described him as such in another monster and also the series. Later on, when Bonaparte gains more humanity, Johan becomes a bigger monster than him. Therefore, the monster devoured the monster. And the dragon gave it his power, and his throne, and the great authority. They worshipped the dragon, for he had given authority to the beast. To Kenzo Tenma, all humans are equal, and Johan Liebert believes that all lives are equal too, but in a different way. Johan sees all of them as equal. He can kill a murderer the same way he can kill a politician. In death, they are equal. Tenma is the opposite of Johan, making him the only person to be able to resist his spell. This is why in the end, after all their time chasing a seemingly untouchable beast, Tenma is still not able to finish off Johan. He had his life ruined and was framed for acts he never even thought of committing. He's the single reason the man with the monster inside him could grow big. The guilt of sad actions has haunted him ever since. Yet still, he couldn't take Johan's life. Because Tenma will believe in the good side of a person, the uncorrupted, innocent side every person was born with. He knows Johan was not at fault for who he is today, or so he likes to think. At the end of Monster, in the final shoot-off, Johan wants Tenma to become a monster, and Tenma wants Johan to become a human. The question of the true monster lies within humans. Human nature, that's all. Humanity as we have it all within us to become the monster. It is only our positive upbringings and our social that keeps us from descending into the spiral. The doctor was never gonna pull the trigger. By not doing so, he was able to beat the curse of the monster. Making Tenma off him would be Johan's magnum opus. Johan was shot by a father wearing the mark of the beast. And of course, who was volunteering to save his life yet again? Ten horns and seven heads is what the father says as he is about to shoot Johan. This is like how they mentioned this in the beginning and everything I've been talking about. 
The author links it all up, all plot lines. The dragon described in earlier passages is Satan. In other words, devil worship will accompany the rise of the beast from the sea. Worshippers will realize that Satan empowered the beast, but they will also worship the beast. This worship is the deification of a man. The worshippers assume that the beast is so powerful that no one can fight against it. The worshippers are the neo-Nazis in Monster and how they worship Johann Liebert, but they also mention that Johann is unstoppable. These are the people that make Johann seem like this world-ending threat and can do crazy things on a larger scale. This is why people also think Monster's ending with Johann's goal was kind of lackluster, when in reality, you're just looking at what everyone says about Johann at face value. Tenma and Johan's final battle is an ideological one, and throughout the series you see this. Which will turn into a human, or a monster? This is what monster is, not a thriller with an anticlimactic ending, but rather a thriller with a story that teaches others to not give in to your dark side. That only a good pure heart will stand victorious, whereas a tainted one will eventually consume everything around it. Just like a nameless monster.